Kidnappers have been targeting communities and schools like this one, from which Yahaya Paul Michelia was taken. There was a head count. He counted we were about 37. After the head count, that was when we stated the journey. We trekked for about 21 days from Mando through Guruku till after 21 days, we got to our final destination at Zamfara, a, local, a place called Giu, a forest called Giwa Forest. It was, it, it was not a, a, a really nice experience. It was, it was a really hard time for us then, but we had to just endure because sometimes we could stay there about a week or two, no food. The only things we, the only thing we fed, feed on then was mangoes. A story that he shares with Bernard, Yayok Abu. He was working on a piece of rented farmland when people he thought were passers-by attacked and took him and a few others into captivity. A priest was with them, was shot. The experience is horrible. This is something you wouldn't even want your enemy to even experience. Seriously. Spent over a month, about 41 days or so. No beating. No freedom of movement. No freedom of speech. You're basically under instructions, except you're asked to go out, you go out. He says it not only affected him, but his family as well. At least it has changed me, it has, it has left a dent on my body that I will never forget. Anytime I look at it, I remember those days in the bush. And financially wise, it has also crumbled me. Random kidnappings are a problem affecting many parts of the country. But the situation is getting worse in the northern state of Kaduna, where it is now a booming business. Most of the affected communities are poor, and the families of the kidnapped are usually left to raise the money to secure their loved ones' release. With little government intervention and security forces turning a blind eye, kidnappers operate with impunity, continuing a cycle of fear and exploitation. Adeswa Egbon, TRT World, Kaduna, Nigeria.